Yeah, All sure. Right. Let me start my desktop sharing. Okay. All right. Now, hello, everybody. Hello. We're having a little difficulties with uh, obvious uh, internet connections. Not obvious, just the normal internet connections. Uh, everybody knows Price. He's been down here quite a bit. He's on CNBC. He's, uh, I mean, he's probably one of the best known technical investors on the markets right now. So, um, as soon as he gets his screens up, I'm going to let him take it away. But uh, I've known Price for years. His stuff is. Gets right down, down to earth, basic, good common sense stuff. So, Price, I'm not going to delay you any further. Welcome to the Candlestick Forum. We're once again anxious to see what you've got for us. Well, thanks, Steve. It's great to be with you all. Sorry for my delay. I was having some issues logging in there, uh, but we we found a way around it. That's as a trader, as you all learn. You know, if it if at first you don't succeed, try try again. You'll get there eventually, and I will too. I'm glad I got to you all eventually. So thank you, it's Steve. It's always great to be with uh, the Candlestick Trading Forum group because I think we you know see a lot of like-minded people that share a passion for education. Uh, I'm just curious. We're going to talk tonight about the four fears in your trading. We're going to get into some market charts, give you a taste if you're not familiar with the big trends approach to defining the, the, the key moves and how you can take advantage of them. What is everybody trading? Are you trading stocks? Are you trading options? Are you trading futures, Forex? Just type in in the chat box. I love to get your engagement throughout here. We always have a lot of interested people. So quite a few stock folks, uh, some options folks, uh, a little bit of futures, a little bit of Forex, all of the above. Uh, yeah, some, I heard somebody saying they trade toothpicks and toothpaste if that's what made them the money. So uh, it does pay to be, I think, uh, you know, a very flexible, uh, you know, in, in whatever you trade, wherever the opportunity is. But a lot of folks are trading stocks and options and then some futures and uh, and other miscellaneous uh, uh, tradables. Uh, bottom line is we're going to talk tonight about the mastering the four fears in your trading. I do want to remind you, of course, that everything I share with you here tonight is geared for your information and education only. Uh, make sure that you know that even as we talk about current markets, nothing I'm talking about tonight is geared as a specific recommendation. So you shouldn't consider it to go rush out and buy or sell come tomorrow morning, uh, but do uh, consider it as educational. Uh, I do trading rooms and stuff where people can follow me live as well as with alert services for our various options clients. You know that the best thing you can do is take full accountability for your investment decisions, and so ultimately you know you're solely responsible for that. And here at Big Trends, we seek to be a resource for you to make better decisions. Uh, and we're going to talk tonight about tying in uh, the psychology into your technical analysis. Make sure you consult with your tax or financial advisor on anything that might affect your unique financial and tax situation. Um, and I do have my associate Chris Sarin with me uh, to help answer questions as we go because I tend to be so focused on the charts and the presentation that I'll try to pick up some que some questions as we go or are definitely at the end as well. You know, what I find that makes trading so challenging for most people, you know, especially when you come from success in the work world, corporate or entrepreneurial wise, you know, you know that if you dig in hard enough, you can really be successful in your career, right? Just like you, if you went through schooling and you had success in schooling, you know, if you just studied harder, you tended to have better results. What happens when you dig in too hard in the markets? It's kind of not a perfect translation, is it, from a successful work career into a successful trading and investing career. You have to be careful about digging in. You want to be flexible because the reality is that, you know, you've got to know multiple pieces of the puzzle here to truly be successful over time. And so Steve does a great job teaching about candlesticks and various technical indicators. I'll share with you some of my key technical pieces tonight. But why, what I find is as you get into options, it's not just then adding options into the mix. What I find is you've got to also know the market assessments. You've got to have some sense of where the market's going because if you buy the wrong momentum stock at the wrong time, you could have the best stock and then still be wrong if you're on the wrong side of the market because the market will tend to drag most of the stocks higher with it on the upside as you've seen here in the last couple of weeks and we'll show you how our system's been bullish here over the last couple of weeks and, and really a powerful signal. Uh, and not over yet, although we have jobs data out tomorrow morning. So always be careful about event risk. We've been scaling out of 
profitable positions gradually and tightening our stops. But the piece I want to spend some time on tonight is this third piece also, the trading psychology piece. It's not the most exciting piece for most of you because you want to know about indicators. You want to know about chart patterns. You want to know about specific buy and sell rules. That's only part of the equation. We're going to talk about some of that, but the reality is you've got to focus on this managing your internal states. Because what will happen is if you don't, if you, if you, let's say that you're really doing well in the markets and you're going through a really positive phase and you're just making money, it seems like, trade after trade after trade. What do you think is going to happen to you fairly quickly as you start having all that success go to your head and you start saying, uh, wow, this is easy. I should have quit my day job a long time ago, right? I, I basically have this figured out. What do you think you start to do with your capital allocation from there, the money management piece of the equation? Will you start putting more or less in, do you think? You'll start loading the boat. That's right, Billy, but you'll lose big dollars eventually because it's like doubling down at the blackjack table. If you're on a big run, you keep doubling down, doubling down. You're going to make a lot of money real fast, but then guess what? You're also going to give back a lot of money real fast. That's right, Rick. You'll take on too much risk, and Scott, you're correct. We want to manage our risk consistently over time. This means you have to basically know in your heart of hearts that even if you have some of your best signals you ever received, even if you're uh, talking about very high probability patterns of success, you still have to manage your capital intelligently or else you blow up. Some of the best and brightest on Wall Street have blown themselves up by the same motto, the long-term capital management hedge fund guys. Remember, they won the Nobel Prize for uh, the options pricing model in 97, and guess what happened in 98? They almost blew up the entire financial markets with their trillions of dollars of leverage because they thought they could just take leverage to the infinite degree, and they got blasted ultimately. So this goes back to knowing yourself. If you've got a tendency to maybe ride those emotional extremes, highs and lows, it's really important to start to get some psychological tactics together to manage these emotions. So we're going to talk tonight about one of my favorite quotes uh, from uh, the book Reminiscences of a Stock Operator. Um, Lefebvre is the author, L-E-F-E-V-R-E, -E -E, down there at the bottom uh, bottom right. It's actually, I put William, but it's actually Edwin Lefebvre, but L-E-F-E-V-R-E. -E. Look this one up, buy a copy, um, pick it up on Amazon or wherever you like to shop for your books. It should be in your trader's library as a result, as a result of managing the emotions. Now, this is based on the story of Jesse Livermore, the famed trader that lived 100 years ago. And what I would contend is that while technology has changed, and a lot of you should have read it, that's right, if you haven't read it, pick it up. If you have read it, put it on your once a year review list, okay? This is one something I review at least once every 12 months, even if I already read it, because it's so prevalent to the same emotions that we're all dealing with in the markets. Most of you know about fear and greed, um, and we're going to talk especially about those tonight. But then also he talks about other the speculators' deadly enemies are also ignorance. I think a lot of you are, are combating ignorance by the fact that you're here tonight, by the fact that you're in with Steve regularly, learning new tricks of the trade all the time. And then the other fourth emotion is hope. You've heard about that term slope of hope. You get in a, um, in a trade, you start hoping. You ever find that? You're starting to root for a trade. We're going to talk about how to manage that sensation. And this quote here, all the statute books in the world, all the rule books and all the exchanges of the earth cannot eliminate these uh, emotions, that is, from the human animal. I love that term, <coughs> human animal, because you think about it, human animal. What separates us as humans from the rest of the uh, food chain, if you will, the rest of the mammals and animals out there? What would you say is the differentiating factor that gives us humans possibly an edge? Um, you say uh, money. Well, you know, how do you get money? Soul. Well, you can make a make a case that maybe animals, some of your pets, for example, may well have a soul. They certainly uh, have man's best friend, dogs and cats and other pets alike. Uh, I think people would, might debate that, but I, I agree. Reasoning. Uh, you know, it's the mindset. It's it's the intelligence. That's right. It's it's a whole other level of brain. That's right, Ragnar. It's it's the it's the thought that you know we all know that we have this original what some people call the monkey mind, right? The the original reptilian brainstem is still in us. That's like the first layer, right? But then and that's and that's where the fight or flight response comes from. That's where when you get into a trade. 
do you ever find that you find you get into a trade and maybe your heart's racing almost as soon as you're in that trade? Either it's racing because the trade's starting to work for you and you're starting to feel that excitement of a trade, which, again, I'd say you have to manage those emotions. Or you start to see a trade going against you. You get frustrated. You get angry. You get upset. You go, there's that market. As soon as I get in, then it flips on me as soon as I get filled on the trade. Ever, anybody ever feel that emotion, right? You've got all these emotions here, and the reality is we've got to manage it. And so and never. That never happens, right, John D. Uh, bottom line is that uh, what we're talking about here is that we've got to take ourselves to a higher level than the rest of the animals and get out of that fight or flight response. It was important as an evolutionary need to be able to outrun or at least be not the slowest person trying to outrun those other animals on the plane, right, or else you get eaten. So the bottom line is, but as humans, we now have evolved additional brain capacity in our neocortex and the other aspects of the brain that basically give us a lot more ability to reason, ability to look forward, not just think in the moment, but start to look ahead and start to plan for how we're going to outwit the other animals, if you will, the other uh, kings of the jungle, and, and be our own king of our own uh, trading jungle, if you will. So, you know, I think that's a great quote. And, and what this goes, that's right, Bill says, I just need to be faster than that other person, right? Uh, and, and But you've always got to be working to not be the, the slowest, right? You've got to work to be better and better, right? Now, a lot of people would say, you know, that the, you know, the technology of the, you know, there's a lot of hype right now about the high-frequency traders and that they are manipulating the markets. And I think that that's kind of a smokescreen, frankly, for, you know, people wanting to make excuses. I certainly wouldn't recommend you try to trade in microseconds like those uh, – those particular traders are doing, then you're playing their game. We want to basically turn the tables and play a different kind of a game where we can ride trends for a more meaningful period of time. And instead of worrying about a penny or, or two, we want to think about dollars and tens of dollars, hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, you know, literally building a much bigger uh, opportunity. So we don't want to try to be picking up pennies in front of a bulldozer. We want to be riding the bulldozer. Now, the, the bottom, that's the big trends, and that's what we're focusing on today on any time frame. Now, from this perspective, um, the bottom line is that there's four big fears here. And this is kind of adapted from some of the work of some of the other great trading psychology uh, books out there that I've read, like, for example, Mark Douglas. I highly recommend Mark Douglas's books. Um, you know, so I don't claim that I'm the starting point of all this. I just kind of try to simulate good information and basically put it in a place you can use it. There's four big fears Douglas talked about. Um, and actually, let's talk about the first one here, fear of losing, that, you know, the idea that everybody has a fear of loss, right? And it's not just in your trading. A lot of people have that in their life, right? And, and so that actually prevents a lot of people from even taking a risk, even venturing out because they're so afraid of losing anything. You know, and so that's why you get a lot of people that are just on a, a paycheck-based mentality. And, and I think that, you know, as you potentially break out of that cycle, you know, you say, look, how can I get magnify my income potential? How can I not just be grinding it out paycheck to paycheck? You know, you have a lot of people that are literally one paycheck away from being in the poorhouse. And that's where we want to flip that and say, how can we create plentiful streams of income and the first thing we've got to do is to find a good system and a good method. We're going to talk about that. But then you've also got to know, whenever you place a trade, where's the place at which you're going to say, I will acknowledge I'm wrong at what we would call the stop. You all know about stops. But the bottom line is that it's kind of like the, the Clint Eastwood, you know, can you handle the truth, punk? You know, the idea, can you handle exiting at your stop? Because I know a lot of people that tell me that they use stops, but then as soon as the stop gets hit, they start justifying other indicators, other reasons why they might want to stay in the trade. This is how a lot of short-term day trader types back in the late 90s, early 2000s turned from day traders to long-term investors in technology, right? They were left holding the bag because they didn't identify um, – you know, that's right. That, that was Jack Nicholson on that one. Thank you, Scott. I was thinking of the Clint Eastwood, uh, do you feel lucky, punk, right? Same <laughs> same type of concept, right? Uh, Jack Nicholson and uh, A Few Good Men, thank you, uh, was, uh, you know, you can't handle the truth, right? So basically, can you handle that truth that you're not right um, and saying, look, then you need to um, say bye-bye to the trade? And you've got to get in the habit of, of letting go of trades that are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. I'm going to share with you some particular patterns tonight, and I'll, I'll dive into one of my favorite patterns here 
in just a, in just a couple minutes. Um, so you can start to see this in action. And a second big fear is a lot of you have a fear of letting a win turn to a loss. I mean, we all have it. Let's face it. You know, we all have to manage this kind of fear. And, and that's what we're talking about tonight is really helping you manage it better, okay? So, so everybody's got this fear. So what does this tend to make you do? This fear will tend to make you um, basically close out of your winning ideas too quickly and lead to smaller gains. While when you're in a loss, you'll tend to um, do like most traders do and hold on to your losers too long and end up with bigger losses than you should have. It's actually the exact opposite of what all the trading textbooks tell you you should be doing, which is letting your winners run and cutting your losers quickly. Why is it that we do that? Um, it, you do that because you're afraid you've lost um, in the past when you had some gains, you saw them turn into losses, and you say, ooh, I've got a gain. You've heard that old phrase, you can't go broke taking a profit, right? But you can get hurt if you take small gains and then you end up taking bigger losses over time. That's really not taking advantage of the power of the markets, and in particular, when you get into options trading, it gets magnified. It's like putting a magnifying glass on a faulty little crack in your trading psychology and saying, now we'll magnify that error of your ways even more dramatically and say, look, if you ta can't take a small loss on a stock, guess what? That will turn into a bigger loss, and not just on a stock, but even more quickly potentially in an option if you don't really manage those losing trades better. And then on your gains, you need to get more out of your good trades. I see too many people who are basically not getting enough out of their trades. Okay, third point, fear of missing out. You're probably feeling this fear right now. Let me ask you, just, well, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. I'm not going to do that to anybody. But you're probably having the feeling right now as you watch the market race ahead and you say, you know what, um, uh, you see the market racing and you're thinking, geez, I'm really missing out on this uh, particular market here. Now. I'm going to show you a couple of things here uh, that we were calling out in the markets uh, today for our folks in our trading uh, room. And uh, we were talking about two bull trades here, and I'm going to show you just a real quick example of how you could use this information. Whether you're a day trader, by the way, what is everybody's preference? Are you a day trader? Are you on, in and out in the same day? Are you a swing trader in and out in three to five days typically would be my definition of swing trading, or are you more of a position trader, maybe one to four weeks being your preferred time frame, just out of curiosity. Okay, so we've got um, a lot of swing traders, uh, the occasional day trader, occasional position trader, but mostly swing trader. That's good, because I do a lot of swing trading myself. So, um, but we actually did a couple of day trades even today in our trading room, because we said, look, um, and this, these principles apply, by the way, no matter what time frame we're looking at. Let's look for a second at the daily chart, and then I'll show you what I did on the queues here this this uh, this morning for my trading room uh, followers. You, you can see the Nasdaq was kind of dead money. Basically, we hadn't had a buy signal on it since that last one ended in mid March. And what we're really looking at on this particular panel here is we're looking at. And let me zoom it in so you can see it really well on this latest signal. Uh, when the percent R, the the Williams percent R, you probably heard of the percent range indicator. It just says where are we trading within the range? And this is looking back over about the last month and a half on the daily chart. And you're saying, look, when you close up here on May 19th, you can see it's trading up near the highs of this recent range. Not quite at it, but close. And so percent R is moving up to the 94th percentile. I use a positive scale. For those that know percent R, you know that it tends to default to a negative scale. I flip it to a zero to 100 percent positive scale. I call it the grade school scale. I'd just call me basic. I like to I like to get A's. You know, uh, uh, my mom said once I came home crying because I got a 98 percent. Uh, you know, basically, you know, you think I had to deal with a few perfectionism issues when I first got into trading, fresh out of Duke University, been blessed with a great education, and thought, gee, I was the smartest kid on the block. I ought to be able to ace this trading game. And guess what? When I was wrong, I had a hard time letting go of trades, and that cost me initially. And I, I said, I better fix that real quickly or else I'm going to have some problems, right? So the bottom line is that uh, you can see here that, you know, when we go over bot, little, little um, probably TMI, more than you need to know about my history, but it is actually useful to know that, hey, we all, we all have to battle through challenges in our trading. You know, in the early days, I, I learned quickly, if I didn't fix my perfectionism, it was going to fix me. Um, and the bottom line is that we, I learned to let go of trades much more quickly because I had to, to stay in the game and then to continue to grow my portfolio and manage my risk. 
And so David said he went to the same school, had the same problem. It must be something about us dookies, right? But bottom line is that you can see here, um, and I think it goes to anybody that has a high achievement expectation. You know, you come in knowing that you work hard. Historically, you, you get better results. The harder I work, the luckier I get, right? Well, the bottom line is that we, we, can't, we have no room for digging our heels in here. We have to let go of trades that aren't working and hang on to trades that are. Here's one that is working, and we're still hanging on to a piece of it and gradually re-entering it, too, if you've missed a piece of this move. So here's what happened. When we went overbought here, you can see that the percent hour is kind of stuck in this no man's land, I call it, in between the, the overbought and oversold thresholds. And then it went over that into the, what I call the top 20% of opportunities. This whole idea comes from the original concept you probably know as the Pareto principle, right? The 80-20 rule. I know a lot of you have heard of the 80-20 rule. What would you think that the 80-20 rule would mean for your trading? The 80-20 rule in, in most things in life, most of your actions, it says most of your results, 80% of your results are going to come from about 20% of your activities. Think about it in the context of trading, it's saying that 80% of your profits are probably going to come from about 20% of your trades. It doesn't mean you're not profitable on the other 80% of your action. You're still getting about another 20% of your profits out of that other four out of five trades on average, 80 out of 100 trades. But the bottom line is I want more of those top 20% ideas. I'm, that top 20 out of the 100, the best two out of 10, are the ones that are going to drive my results. And that's right, Osman. It's a Pareto principle, as it's called. You should look it up, folks, if you haven't heard of it. So the idea here is that if it moves into one of those top 20% opportunities, we might have a new um, buy signal. But I won't buy it right there. I need it to prove something to me. And my rule is that I need it to actually close above that first overbought bars high on a bull trade. I'm giving you a very specific setup I use that you can take home today and go onto your platform. It's Williams Percent R available on uh, most uh, every major platform. And I'm even going to give you a setting here that I normally wouldn't give out for free. I'm going to say, you know what, you can use a 30 bar setting here on Percent R. I'm going to give you that. So don't use the default setting that most of them defaults you to too short of a setting. And this percent R line will be all over the place and you won't get the kind of clean, steady overbought signal that I want to see when I'm in a really good trend. So guess what? This is a retraining I'm trying to do for you. Overbought is actually a good thing if it keeps staying overbought. Now you can see here, we go overbought here on the 19th of May on the queues. They've been dead money for the prior couple of months. You can see we weren't getting much of anything. We were getting a couple of attempted sells, but we're above the long-term moving average. So I only like to take trends that are lined up on both the short-term and the longer-term trend. So this one was saying, look, I'm waiting for the next buy in this setup here. Took a while, right? Um, but for a position trader saying, look, if it closes over that high, 88.46, and there it is, closing above there two bars later on the 21st of May, that's giving us the official confirmation that we're breaking out. And it, yeah, you can say, yeah, well, that's an obvious breakout there. Well, sometimes they're more obvious and sometimes they're not. And But the beauty is the percent R tells us, look, it's overbought, it's staying overbought, and we're continuing to see. Essentially, what's happening here, in my view, is that institutions want to be a part of this market. They want to start buying into that. And they usually can't buy it all at once. Now, the queues are very liquid. You see we traded 35 million shares today um, on the NASDAQ. Uh, this is the NASDAQ 100 QQQ Trust ETF. Um, and the bottom line here is that we've got other indicators like the DMI lines. Interestingly enough, the DMI lines weren't really confirmed just yet. We were in kind of uh, sort of a less clear mode for those. But the beauty of this is that you can see here that that's confirmed buy at that close. I actually did my testing based on buying the next bars open. So the system buys the next bars open there, 88.94. You say, well, hold on, we're a little bit off of the lows. I wish I could buy it right at the low and sell right at the high. Hey, we all would love to have that ability, but I think that's a fool's game. In the early days of my trading back in uh, 90, 91, I was trying to pick tops and bottoms like that, and I just found even though I do love candles, and I know Steve's an expert at candles and possible reversal patterns, I'm not as good at that. I find that I like it better when I see that you don't just get one bar moving here, but you get a confirmation that tells me I can avoid a lot of whipsaws and fake outs. And so that gives me a lot more confidence in, in the big trends communities. Give me a lot of feedback. They love that extra confidence of the confirmation bar or candle there. And so that's now the buy there, 88.94. And you can see we've been just steadily marching up ever since that point. Now, for you swing traders, we can take that same daily view, and now we can start to whittle it down a little bit more into the hourly view. 
you can actually see we've had a couple of nice little hourly signals here over the last couple of weeks. And you'll see that sometimes you'll be wrong. You know, sometimes, you know, again, the daily chart wasn't really confirmed here, but if you're just using the hourly back here on the 12th, you get the buy there as it follows through. And my rule is that when it comes back under that uh, overbought threshold there, that's my new stop. If it closes under that low, I got to get out. And this one stopped out right there a couple days later. So you bought it at, uh, for a losing trade. I like to not just talk about winning. Bought at 88.05, and then you're out here at uh, 87.84. You're down 21 cents on the Qs. Here's another one where it looks, and I've got some other filters I use, like the D ADX and the some other tools I can't, don't have time to go into today. But another buy signal here. You can see we're holding underneath the acceleration bands, but let's just say you just take the percent R buy, 88.38. You see it retest back down here at about a low of 88.08 and it stops underneath that, and you're getting out there at 87.96. So you lose yet another, um, in that case, 42 cents. You're now down a total of about 66 cents, okay? Well, look at this latest signal, the buy signal here at 88.85. You see we've had one retest here, didn't violate. Had another retest back here on, um, that was uh, June 2nd, Monday morning here this week. That was another key test. It didn't violate there, and it even didn't violate that next little key test from over and back under that overbought threshold. So that's our last stop, $90.94. We never had a close underneath that. It tried to trade below there. Even looking back as far as yesterday morning, it tried to trade below there in the morning. It flipped right back up by that hourly close. And then today, we were even down early, and it flipped right back up. So this is a market that has not wanted to go down. Now, I, I was telling my subscribers this morning in my uh, trading room that, okay, if you miss this move, now you say, look, we look at this situation and you say, hey, you know, guess what? For those that have missed this move, we even had a little volatile action here in the morning, right? You saw how we shot down. That was a little too steep of a pullback, even though it looked like a key test. It had violated yesterday afternoon's test. It just got a little bit too steep of a pullback and said, okay, you should stop that out. Well, guess what? And so that was about a break even from the yesterday morning signal. And again, I'm sharing, and, and we did have Amazon today, Shakar, so I'll show you that one next as well. Um, and those were our two big new trades this morning. Now, bottom line is, and, and the, the key is, here's a key psychology principle. How many times have you gotten flipped out of a trade at a break even, even a loss, and then you get your next signal and you can't take it because you say, oh, no, I got out here at 91.40 and now I'm getting re-signaled back into the trade because it's giving me a new buy as it goes 91.66, closes above there for you day traders here at 91.72. And you're saying, oh, I can't buy 30 cents higher. I'll wait till it comes back down to where I got stopped out last time, right? Does, does the NASDAQ give you that chance? No, not in a good trend. You're missing out. That's that missing out feeling that you're going to have where you're going to get whipsawed. You know, you can see the DMI lines were still, um, directional movement lines were still holding up even on that little pullback. But I'm saying just if you follow percent R, you're saying I got to follow the rules, get out, and then guess what? We hop back on there. So when I started up my room this morning, uh, right there at that timing, I said, look, we just got a, a buy signal here. We usually like to let the markets kind of shake out for an hour or hour and a half, so, and then go ahead and, and share with folks uh, towards the end of each week what I'm seeing in that day, that week ahead, and even the month ahead. And so the bottom line here is that we're looking here, and yes, the blue DMI lines are positive, red is negative, so blue above red is good, as long as it confirms when we get that follow-through, which that was about the confirmation point on the DMIs back here. Had a couple of near tests of it late yesterday and even early today. Didn't even quite see it there, but got close, and then it flipped right back up. But Percent R is trying to find the strongest trends. There's the new one there, 91.72. So at that point, I told my subscribers, guess what? I want you to buy the 90 strike in the money calls. For you option traders, when I buy an option, I like to buy it a very in the money option for quick trading, especially when I was buying the weekly options that expire tomorrow. And I said, you know what? With the jobs data due out, I want to actually um, control my risk by a, sell, we're going to sell an option against the option we're buying. So we sold a 92 call overhead, and we got 26, 27 cents for that. So I said, look, above 92, 27, we're kind of capped out to the upside. Plan to close this one out at the end of the day or if the percent R gets violated in between. So let's look at the options for a second. So at that point there this morning, we were looking at the 0606, the weekly options. For those that don't know, 
options, the weeklies are the shortest term options that have anywhere between a couple days, in this case of life left, to tomorrow's close for those options, or up to you know next next Friday would be the other choice we could have considered. Now, right at that 11 o'clock bar, you can see this option was trading at about a buck 71. That's where we bought it this morning, a buck 71. And at that same time, it might actually been closer to a buck 80 by the time we we were talking about it and then getting filled. But at the same time, so a buck 80, you can see that option closed at 230. Now I didn't get I didn't get the pure um, upside on just that option because at the same time I did for con for being a little more conservative. We we call this a debit spread. We sold the 92 call. Remember that option closed at 232. We sold the 92 call at the same time. Uh, there this morning for about 27 cents. So we put an order in at 27 cents and it got filled here um, later that hour. Okay, so we bought one side about a buck eight, so the other side for about 27 cents. So we're in on that overall trade for right in the neighborhood of about a buck, just under a buck 60. Well, you can see here that option went against us, you know, in that case by about 22 cents. The other option went for us by 52 cents. So on the net, we were a beneficiary by about 30 cents, and we said do this contract 10 times. Okay, so we made about $300 on that trade. Not a home run trade, but I said, look, for a day trade that's on the overall market to just scrape off another few hundred dollars just for the day's action if you're sitting on some extra cash, that's a relatively um, good choice. Now, these are called option charts. I really am a big believer in option charts to show me not just what's going on with the NASDAQ, but what's going on with individual stocks as well. So here's the other one I want to show you, but actually we're going to show Amazon in a second, but I do want to just, or since I promised you to talk about the four fears, I want to talk a little bit more about emotions here because what will happen there is as you start making money when you follow these big trends methods, you'll start to lose your fear. That can be a dangerous thing here if you get into a situation in which you lose all of your fear. A little bit of fear goes a long way to keeping you healthy, keeping you balanced not making you overcommit your capital. So I want you to say, look, my rule of thumb is don't overcommit. Keep it between 5 and 10% of your trading uh, account for that strategy on each new trade. That way you're not going to let any one trade make or break you. And then the fourth fear would be what I would call the fear of being wrong. We've all been there, right? I talked about my perfectionism challenges and when I got started trading 25 years ago. Bottom line is, you know, I I initially went to saying, well, there's got to be a way in the form of looking at more and more indicators, right? But what you notice is is that you know if you look at too many things, the danger of that is a you might get analysis paralysis and literally be like a deer in headlights locked up, so you can't actually pull the trigger. A lot of you have a fear of pulling the trigger because you've been burned before, and now you're carrying that psychological damage forward into your current trading. And that's something that, you know, I'll show you how you can break out of that cycle and start getting back to steadily pulling the trigger on a small scale and then rebuilding your confidence over time. But the other aspect of analysis paralysis, of course, is if you're looking at too many things, then you basically will start justifying why you should stay in the trade. Well, yeah, the percent are broke, but the DMI lines are still okay, right? That'll get you in trouble because then you'll start to basically um, get yourself to where you can't get out of trades quickly enough. And so from this perspective, how do we manage that fear? One big assumption is you cannot assume that your next trade is going to be like your last one. A lot of traders get too low after a loss and too high after a gain or a series of gains. you got to learn that if you take the small losses, the bigger gains over time will take care of themselves. You've also got to ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen? If you truly acknowledge that, yes, you're trading with risk capital and especially acknowledge that, look, I could lose what I put into this trade in the form of buying an option. I don't want to, but the bottom line is what if something wacky happens and the next 9-11 happens, the markets get halted, and now they reopen four days later and you gap down the wrong direction against you. Fortunately, I didn't have that problem in 2001 during that tragedy, but the bottom line is that you know that happened to some people. They were locked into those trades. You've got to make sure that you manage your risk so that you, even in the case of some kind of a disaster scenario like that, can handle an unusual event. So we never want to trade too large because that's where your risk gets too large and that's where you get too stressed out, both financially stressed 
But I'm talking today about really managing your emotional internal states as well. So some strategies you can use. If you're having trouble with pulling the trigger with fear basically taking over your trading, you do all the work, you get to the point where you just have to push the button to get in or more importantly to get out, and then you can't for some reason hit the button to get out. This is where you start small. Focus first and foremost on execution. If you grade yourself, if you're having trouble pulling the trigger and you grade yourself on execution, then you might say, look, you know what, if you're kind of locked up, just go and go into a paper trade first. Yeah, it's not going to be the same as real money. That's the truth. But you got to start somewhere. And I would say just focus on the next 10 trades and just following the rules of your system, whatever it is. If you don't have a system, you can work with the big trends approach with percent %R. Learn those tools. Learn the other tools that I teach on really simple technical analysis that's effective. And then say, look, I'm just going to grade myself of, A, did I follow the rules getting in and getting out, and do that for 10 trades in a row. If you have a trade in between where you do not follow the rules for some reason, when it said to get out for some reason you held on, I don't care what your excuse is of why you held on, then you've got to start it all over again and work on building up 10 straight trades in a row where you follow the rules, win, lose, or draw, and you start building the habit of consistent execution. As you do that for a couple of 10 series sets, then as you feel confident enough, then you can start small with small amounts of real money and then build up your size. The beauty of the markets is they're scalable. You can trade um, in a scaled way and basically a lot uh, of benefit that way. And then we teach also what we call low risk entry. This is a, a big trend strategy where, look, if you're, if you're worried about buying a market that's too overbought, then you, you want to wait until you can get a low risk entry. Now, or you want to scale in on a, on a smaller scale. So here's the other trade I want to show you that we did this morning. We just picked up these two new trades for directional debit spreads here. So this was Amazon. And you saw what's happened this morning. This is the 15-minute chart. For those of you that like to quick trade one or maybe two days max, the 15-minute chart is my preferred time frame. I don't even recommend going down to a five-minute chart. I find that the noise level will increase too, too dramatically. And so this morning, not only – you see yesterday Amazon gave a very kind of a weak percent R buy signal. The, the ADX in green here on the bottom panel was not trending. It was actually going down. That's a sign of a slow market. We also didn't have it breaking outside of these bands. Look at what happened this morning. Not only was ADX starting, the green line starting to move up, but also look at the break outside of these bands. These are my acceleration bands in the uh, purple line, and then we also have some longer-term Bollinger bands. Those are really useful, both of those bands, to tell you that, hey, this thing's starting to really launch here. So we get the percent R breakout this morning, the follow-through there, and it's breaking out on the bands here at 312. Now, we didn't start the room up until 11 o'clock, so by that point, we were already up to 317.21. And I said, you know what? That's okay. You know, we were hovering actually around 318 by the time we got to this trade on our, on our 15 minute scans. And I said, it's not too late, but I'm going to do this on a smaller scale. So I did what I call a half position. I took, instead of our normal 10% allocation for this strategy, I took just a 5% allocation. And what I said is, look, with the stock at 318, I said, let's buy the 310 weekly options that expire tomorrow. We're going to get out at the end of the day today, and then let's sell the 320 calls. And we did that strategy this morning for, uh, let me actually pull it up here in a minute so you can actually see it. Uh, we did that strategy this morning for like 720, I think it was, or 715 we might have gotten filled. I said, get in at 720 or less. I think we got filled at uh, 715. I'm pulling up the trading room right now so you can look at it. And um, and so, one second while that pulls up. So you can see what happens. This thing stays overbought. Now, how does a market stay overbought? It keeps on making higher highs. So it's actually stretching the high end of the range out dramatically there, right? So, you know, when you look at this situation here, and you say, okay, you know, you can see here this morning on Amazon. Let me pull that trade up real quick. So here was a trade that we did. And, you know, we weren't early on this one. You know, I told folks, I said, look, we bought two contracts. And we said, okay, you know what? We're looking at this saying, okay, we've got a few other trades on here. But bottom line is we're saying, hey, we bought two of them at 720 or less. You can see our cost base is actually filled at 718. 
This is only one contract remaining. At the end of the day, it's worth $182. And you can see the middle of that spreads nine. You can also see that I filled one of them here at nine. Because I said, if it gets to nine, sell one of your two contracts. So we bought it at 718, sold one of them at nine. The other one was at nine right at the end of the day, right in the middle of the bid-ask spread. So basically, we made $182 on the last contract and $182 on the first. So that was up $364. Uh, minus your commission, okay? So call it just about 330 bucks, even on two little contracts, right? So we invested a net of about $1,400 and turned it into, um, you know, the neighborhood of about, you know, 1660, right? So up about 360 bucks, 330 net. Again, not a home run, but you know, make 300 on the queues, make 330 on on the Amazon half position. And that one never gave a retest until late in the day. By then, it's too late. But then it's time to say bye-bye to the trade. So the point here is, um, I'm glad you had it as well, David. The point here is that even if a market is breaking out, you can still trade it at a smaller scale, and you don't have to hit home runs to still be a profitable trader and, more importantly, to manage your trading psychology so you're not chasing the market. I personally get very frustrated if I chase a market and then basically see the market come back for a normal little retest, but I put on too much, too big of a size position and then might even get stopped out because of it because now it makes me antsy. I don't want to be antsy if I'm trading. I've got to stay very balanced and very zen-like. Uh, you know, it's like the old phrase, mind like water, okay? Think about it. You get things that are thrown at you all day in the markets as well as in your life, right? And I, it's sort of like if somebody's dropping in pebbles and then rocks and even the occasional boulder into your pond, if you will. You know, if, if your pond is working to keep a very calm, mind-like water state, then it should absorb that uh, noise or that distraction or that challenge. And, yeah, there might be some ripples in the waves of what's going to happen. It's going to eventually settle out and calm back down again, right? So we want to have that same mind-like water, zen-like calm in our trading. You really want to work to cultivate that over time because as you do, yeah, you're going to get things thrown at you, but you can basically kind of let them come and let them go and not get all worked up about them because if, if you turn them in, in, into your own churn and your own uh, little tsunami, then you're going to have some problems internally, right? We've got to manage that state. You've got to avoid thinking you know it all, kind of the uh, thought of flying too close to the sun, you get burned, right? We're always looking for new edges. That's why we have a variety of things we teach at Big Trends. The percent R is probably the simplest and easiest one you can start with. But you know the markets are always changing. You've got to be willing to also let part of your profit run, just like we gave it a chance there with Amazon. You know, finishing on the second piece where we cashed out of the first piece on the first profit target. So, you know, bottom line is that you're on the right track here being here tonight and being in with Steve and with me to – really have people who share the same kind of passion for always learning, always helping you stay, what I call green and growing. You know, you always want to be picking up something new, getting better and better all the time, not getting complacent. So the basic strategies here, like I said, I share with you a trading book I would add to your arsenal if you haven't already read it on reminiscences of a stock operator. If you've read that one, pick up the Mark Douglas books, uh, The Disciplined Trader and Trading in the Zone. Um, catch my book as well if you want. But bottom line is that, you know, there's a lot of different stuff you can pick up out there. You've got to know where you're good and strong and build on those strengths. But you also have to know, just like if you're driving in a car, you better be aware of your blind spot, right? Uh, you know, when you were learning how to drive, hopefully somebody taught you that you can't just look in your rearview mirror, right? It, I, there's a lot of traders that I call rearview mirror traders. They're just looking in the rearview mirror and thinking that they can trade that way, looking backwards at the past and extrapolate the road ahead from what the road looks like behind. That works really well if the road ahead of you is straight like the road behind you. But as soon as the road ahead of you makes a turn, you're going to be in the ditch because you're looking backwards. You know, you've got to have something that helps you adapt to changes ahead. Um, we have a lot of archives in our uh, webinars for our Big Trends Insiders as well, so you can get signed up for that as a complimentary way to add to your learning uh, arsenal. But know those blind spots, and that way you'll make sure you don't get run over by that 18-wheeler bearing down uh, in the other lane. Okay, managing hope, another big emotion. As I said before, you ever find yourself rooting in a trade? I see a lot of that, you know, and I had a pretty strong ego-driven uh, nature coming, like I said, out of, out of college and basically thought I knew it all. And, and basically, you know, one of the worst things that can happen, you have success right away. And then you think you know it all, right? Then you really think, okay, now I'm going to be right all the time. That's where that perfectionism can really get you. 
that can also really hit you on the allocation of capital. But as a good trader, you know you've got to accept that at times you're going to be wrong. The, the, the phrase I like to use is don't be wrong for long. It's okay to be wrong, but just don't be wrong for long. The idea is that give yourself a chance to find out if that pattern, once you've defined these patterns of success, I call them my success profile on any given indicator. If those patterns are holding, you want to be riding those. If they're not holding, you want to say sayonara, exit when that pattern breaks, and then you can go back and, and study it later. Are you following your system? I find a lot of traders are trading based on hope. See, the danger of what's happened with the bull run we've had in recent times is a lot of people are starting to tell me, oh, I don't use stops or I use really loose stops because stops just hurt my overall performance. You know, I have to stop it out, then I have to buy it back in when it rallies on the next wave. I heard that in the late 90s as well. People got sloppy. They got into a place where they just thought, well, the market will bail me out. That's a place where you're giving up control if you start trading like that. You've got to basically focus on following your system because if you move to hope, it is a slippery slope. It's a, it's a slope where then you get stuck in trades that you know you shouldn't be in. And then what's happening? I, I call it the can you hear me now trade. If you're, if you're, it's like the Verizon commercial, right? If you're in a little bit of a loss and it's like, can you hear me now? Just slightly kind of being like, yeah, we're, we're hitting that point where really you should probably get out of this trade. Uh, it's not really hurting that much. I'll give it a chance to bounce back to break even, right? And then it's like, can you hear me now? It's starting to lose more. And then it's screaming at you, can you hear me now? And now your pain is great, and you're really saying, oh, this is so nasty, I've got to blow it out. By that point, it's too late. You've already left too much money on the table. So you've got to have fairly tight stops, manage that appropriately, and give it a chance to run. So that's what I talk about when I talk about low-risk entries here. We talk about a low-risk entry um, you know, I was mentioning, you know, the markets here. So, you know, like if we're looking at the NASDAQ and I was saying, look, you know, that trade we were just talking about, um, you know, and even just the trade that NASDAQ has been over the last couple of weeks, um, you know, if we pull that chart real quick, you'll see what I, I define as a low risk entry is if you miss that first um, breakout signal, say, as a swing trader, you can see here, yeah, you miss that first run, right? But when this thing comes back for what I call that key retest, that's an, another spot where you can put on a trade because, you look, you say, oh, my gosh, I missed so much of the potential. Well, guess what? From 90.88, unless it has a close underneath there in a future candle, um, you can see it trades underneath there a couple different times. It never closes underneath there, and then we're off to the races yet again. So now you're saying, look, we've already put on another point and a half from buying that last little what I call low risk reentry spot. It doesn't mean that there's no risk. There's just less risk there than there is chasing a market after a breakout. So you've got to manage appropriately there. Um, and so, you know, consider a time stop too. For those of you who are option traders, that might be a new concept. If, it's, if a trade is flat on you after three to five trading days or three to five bars of action, if you use the hourly chart, I'd say three to five hours then basically you should consider getting out if it's flat or even just a hair down after three to five bars of action or candles of action. Why? Because the best trades go pretty quickly. You know, the, the non-movers tend to just sit around there, chop around. You know, maybe they're not breaking yet, but they're just not getting that lift that we want to see quick enough. So that's another good strategy for that one. Now, managing greed. Let's talk about my definition of greed first. I believe that greed can be defined as simply a, a lack or an evaporation of fear. You know, when fear leaves the building. You know, Gordon Gekko said greed is good, but you know kind of how that ended up for him. You know, uh, you even have another prominent corporate raider in the real world getting investigated right now, um, along with a famous golfer. Well, the bottom line is that, you know, if you lose all of your fear, this is very, very dangerous. A little bit of fear can be very good. And Steve even mentions greed has killed more men than lightning. I love it. Great quote, Steve. You know, that, you know, the bottom line is that, yeah, I mean, you've seen so many smart people in the markets who have just blown out because they didn't have a, a way to manage that aggressive tendency when they really were pressing their bets. And, yeah, sure, sometimes they've gotten rich pressing their bets. But other, that's like, like I said before, doubling down at the blackjack table. Sometimes you get lucky, but if you keep doing that, eventually you also get unlucky. You've got to take some of that luck out of the equation and say, look, I'm a believer that you want to certainly focus on skilled trading. And, you know, you know, you know, 
in the horse business, where I'm from here in Kentucky, a lot of the motto is, it's better to be lucky than good. And I, that's why I told my dad when I was at Duke, I said, look, I don't want to be a equine veterinarian like I thought, Dad, because I got into a trading contest, finishing the top 1% after taking the Warren Buffett approach for three out of the four months and going nowhere. I had this incredible run. They even sent me a letter, said the best run they'd ever seen in a month. Uh, as I was basically day trading back in the late 80s before I even knew what that concept was about because I just saw the opportunity. And and so I said, Dad, I'm switching majors. I don't want to – I want to do something more conservative than breeding thoroughbred horses. I want to trade stocks and options. And he thought I was nuts, certifiable, right? Well, the bottom line is, though, it's a lot easier to manage your risk in a liquid market than in a game like horses. I love horses and I love that game, but – that's definitely a game for, you know, your spare change, not for, you know, the core of your business sense, at least for, for my taste. You know, so I'm actually surprisingly more risk averse than some of my forebearers uh, who were very prominent in the horse game. But bottom line is that let's just face it here. Uh, you know, you, you've got to not equate luck with skill. If you get lucky on the positive side, there's a there's a rule of thumb which is take half of the trade off and leave half of it on. Especially if you can get a double on an option or more, even on a stock if you get a double or more. Look, you need to go ahead and book some profits and let the rest of that trade run. And you know, so from that point, my strategies are I don't care how good it's going, always look to have that Zen like state that I talked about. Stay on an even keel, get the get to get your own personal pond, lake, whatever you want to call it. Um, reservoir, get it in a nice calm state. You know, don't get too high, don't get too low. Um, and, and ultimately it's about following your plan. Now, you know, from that perspective, you know, you say, okay, so a lot of what people wonder with me is, okay, so what's my plan of action? How do I go and attack the markets day by day? You know, and we're going to go a little bit long tonight because I was a little bit late coming in, but basically let me just share with you what I like to do. So, I use TradeStation, but you don't have to have TradeStation to do things the Big Trends way, but it's one that I do really like. And we use a tool called Radar Screen. Now, Radar Screen is an add-on within TradeStation, and the beauty of this is what I can do is I can take any time frame. A lot of you said you're swing traders, so let's just look at the hourly charts here for a second because if we say, okay, you know, I've got all this data here for the daily, but let's, I'll, I'll, I'll look at all the time frames. It'll take me just a moment to reboot all that data. And I've got a lot of different tools that I use. So if I'm looking at percent R, I'm saying, well, show me what was really strong coming into the end of the day today. And we have plenty, right? And interestingly enough, this is kind of unusual that none of these are actually showing a color until we had one little setup pattern in yellow here right at the end of the day on, of all stocks, ADM, Hartford Daniels Midland, right? What that tells you is the market's already been in a big run. And in fact, the first confirmed green buy signal we had right at the end of the day was actually Citigroup. Now, that's coming in a little bit late, obviously. We'll take a look at City. It tells me that there's a lot of stocks. I look at more than 100 different stocks, and uh, and there's more than 3,000 optionables. But I really try to look at the most active of the, of the active. On the other side of the fence, on the bear side here, yellow means it's setting up and green means it's confirmed. And we had a couple of confirmed sells here late, including WellPoint, WLP. You can see Priceline is also showing us that, although... Some of the other things I look at uh, are showing me it's not quite as strong on Priceline as some of the others. CSIQ, that's a solar stock, right? Some of the solars got hyped up yesterday. Looks like they came back down a little bit today. Um, and so we're looking at these and saying, surprisingly, Lululemon, LULU is another one, and then uh, PBR, uh, Petrobras, the Brazilian oil company. You know, So we're getting these uh, green confirmation signals. In contrast, Red means that it might be a possible what I call a retest, one of those low-risk reentry spots. So like ICE, Intercontinental Exchange, uh, gave one of those late in the day today on a bounce. So these are bounces that are happening. Bristol Myers gave a bounce. We actually cashed out some puts yesterday on Bristol Myers. We've made money on puts in Bristol Myers and Sohu this week in the face of an up market. So it works on both sides. So when I go in and I look at those type of patterns here, so, you know, we said, Citigroup was the only one setting up late, and you can see what's going on there. It's already on a buy, but it was basically like reconfirming that breakout that we were seeing that came in a couple days ago. Now, Citi, if you're paying attention, Citi gave you a first retest yesterday morning, and then here a couple hours before the close, it gave another key percent R retest on the hourly chart. Notice the 15 minutes, a little bit noisier, 
15 minute for you quick traders was in and then hopping back out when percent R kind of broke just a hair too much on the 15 minute chart. Obviously the most powerful signals are going to be the ones in which everything comes together all at once. So, you know, and a lot of you are asking me about Apple. You know that Apple's due to report um, uh, the 741 stock splits due out here um, coming up overnight. And so the bottom line is that, you know, the stock's going to split seven for one. You say, holy cow, look at what Apple did. This is a great example where the stock broke out right after earnings on the daily chart. And I told my students, look, that's the first breakout. But I had some people coming back to me and saying, oh, it ran too much right after your buy signal. Now what? I said, well, wait for the retest. Well, here's a case where waiting for the retest, right in my trading room there on that Friday, the 9th of May, we put on an in-the-money 565 call when Apple was at 582. And I said, look, if it closes a future day under that low, 580.33, you got to get out of this trade. We sold a shorter-term uh, June 6th uh, weekly option out a few weeks in this case for Apple because they have multiple uh, weeks of options. We sold a 600 strike. We said there's some resistance up there at 600. Now you can see we kind of capped our upside. Effectively sold that for about five bucks. We capped our upside about 605. It ended up going out even further. Guess what? We only made 71% in three weeks when we cashed it out this past Friday. Now you know that's you know you can always say yeah you can make more, but I can't complain with 71% in three weeks. You know, now what, I, what would I do with Apple? I'd say I'd be waiting. You know, um, I'd be waiting for the next retest signal. You can certainly break it down on your intraday charts as well. And you can see it's not really where it needs to be on the 15-minute chart, even though it looks okay on the hourly chart. So we're kind of in a mixed set of signals here, more bullish than bearish, but one in which we'd say, you know, kind of expecting Apple to kind of be volatile, but maybe a little bit choppy here over the next uh, post that works out. Now, for those of you who wonder, so what's your next logical step? How do you take advantage of these things I'm teaching? I may have gone a little bit fast for you. Um, we're going to try to come back and answer a few questions, but I want to share with you a special uh, offer that I've set up just for the uh, Bigelow community here at Candlestick Trading Forum, where essentially this is two different whole rounds of coaching that I did, 13-part series, okay? And what I did is I said, look, you know, we want to help you lay the groundwork for, you know, more effective trading over time. And, and it, let's face it, we would all love it if you could just say, boom, snap your fingers, and now you're a master trader. It's not that easy. If, if, if it was that easy, everybody would do it, right? It takes work. And this is where the work can pay off for you over time. So, you know, I don't ever claim anybody that you just, if you just do one thing, like if you, if you just follow percent R, it's certainly going to open you up to a whole range of opportunities that you've frankly probably been missing for your entire trading career if you've never followed that concept of trading that top 20% of the moves that most people stay away from because they're mistrained that overbought is bad. And I'm saying, yeah, overbought can sometimes fail, but bottom line is I've done some extra filters to help it to show you where you can have greater success profiles over time. So what I've done here is I've got two different 13-part series courses, okay? These are 13 hours plus on each one. And you say, oh my gosh, that sounds like a lot. Well, we've done it as a digital access. You can take it at your own pace. Now, a lot of people know me for options. I've been trading options for 25 years as well. Cut my teeth on them. And basically, when I launched Big Trends, really, you know, even as I tried to teach people about stocks and ETFs and even Forex and futures, I said, look, you know, they kept coming back to me for options because that's what I'm known for. So we've got all the foundations pieces and the options pieces are actually those tabs are actually reversed so uh, where it says foundations that's actually the options piece this is the options course know your options all the all the key essentials and then getting into essentials of of buying calls and puts and then going into spreads debit spreads credit spreads um, calendars and diagonals and and this is stuff that frankly back in the day you know we were selling for thousands of dollars and competitors to this day still sell it for thousands of dollars. I'm giving you a rare opportunity here to get this class and the foundations class, which you'll see is all about laying the, the foundations of your trading plan, uh, getting a good trading journal, getting um, you know good open position tracking, getting uh, all the key metrics for building an effective system and how to track your systems to get on the best trading signals. You can get both of these classes. This is like 26 hours of content plus 
for just two ninety five tonight. It's kind of an insane value. But what I want to open your eyes to is how you can really take advantage of if you want to learn options, the ultimate option strategies. Plus if you need to build your trading plan. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but if I asked you how many of you actually have a written trading plan, and I'm not going to stop there, that you could trade somebody else on and then walk away for a year sabbatical, come back in a year and say you know that that trainee you gave them, you know, the information on your written trading plan and they never had a question they were able to execute your trading plan without having to try to dial you up uh, from your remote location. Uh, good luck on that. Bottom line is most of you probably couldn't answer that you indeed have that kind of clarity in your trading plan. You will by the time you get through this class on the foundations. So I'm not putting anybody on the spot, but and thank you, Becky, for posting that. It's, a, it's this link here. Actually, it's a different link. Uh, the psychology link is for uh, a whole different live class we're doing that's actually, I would recommend getting this special, uh, we, we call it position for profits link here first. And that's actually at a lower price. I do have the live class on the psychology class going here uh, as well, but that's more expensive because that's a live class. If you want to do that, you can. But um, regardless, I would say, hey, and you know what? If, if 295 is even too rich for you, I'm going to do something else for you here. You, you can get both of those classes for the lowest price of 295 for both. One-time investment, no future charges. You're, you're set, for, and you can watch them as many times as you want. All I ask is that you keep them for your own use. You, 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 you should not share them with anybody else, okay? This is the kind of stuff that I've spent the last 25 years of my life developing. If that's out of your price range, if you click on the word ultimate option strategies, that's actually a clickable link as is the other one, just foundations for trading mastery there. It's actually a dark blue. If you click on ultimate option strategies, I've actually set it up where you can get the ultimate option strategies class by itself for just $195. So, you know, like I said, there, if you go look up the 13-part class, I've seen all these mentoring uh, places that actually haven't even done options for 25 years like I have that are charging thousands of dollars for it. This is insane value, plus you'll get a dedicated email where you can email in questions anytime you have questions as a uh, coaching member here. So bottom line is that's a great way to go. Or you can also click on the Foundations class. That, too, is available at that link for just $195. You see it pops you to a different web page, the Foundations, or the um, other one is just bigtrends.com slash strategies for the ultimate option strategies. But regardless of which one you add to your cart, or if you want to get the best deal on both, you just click on that Add to Cart button when you've got the um, Position for Profits combination package. Now you're getting the access to both of these series. These are and these are instant on-demand access. So you're going to be getting everything under the sun that I know about options, plus everything I know about building your trading plan, setting the right kind of goals, realistic and achievable goals, what I call smart goals that you can truly accomplish over time. And so bottom line is when you have that in your cart, whichever way you decide to go with it, then you see, and I'm not going to keep this price this low very long, so I'm doing this for Steve's group because Steve's been a good friend to me over many years of doing events together, and we've done some live events in person at live seminars as well, and it's just always great to learn from him, and, and he's, I know he learned a lot from me about options in particular as well as other aspects of the trading plan. Now, bottom line is that put in your information in bold. You have to because that's what you need for the major credit cards. We take Visa, MasterCard, Amex, Discover. We also take PayPal if you want to go that way. If you've worked with one of our uh, trading consultants, Chris Sarah in the room tonight uh, is our lead sales consultant. He can uh, certainly help you and also encourage you to give credit if he has been of assistance to you. I like to give credit to my team when they assist our clients. If nobody's helped you, you don't have to select anybody, but it's your choice. That's up to you. And Bob, you will have to select either one of them or that you're not working with one one way or the other. Uh, and then check on the terms and conditions box. We do spell out the terms and conditions below. You can even see I'm, I'm a big believer in 100% transparency, how we do business um, and how this all works when you – purchase your investment in Big Trends educational content. You're going to get instant access. You can see, just post that in into a separate browser if you want. We can spell out all the payment renewal terms, et cetera, and how that operates. So then once you're ready to go, hit the green button, submit your order, and whether you do the full best value package at the 295 or whether you do any of the individual parts for 195 each, um, those are both great packages. If you just want to learn options for the 195, you can do that or if you just want to build your trading plan for the 195, each of those are incredibly worthwhile. But remember, you're getting 
ongoing access, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to take advantage of the best special if it's in your budget. I know for some of you, you might um, say, gee, you know, I, I only have a little bit to spend. Well, then you can choose one of the two if you think that this is out of your budget. I've tried to make it as attractive as possible. Literally, I was selling this same information, um, a 52 series class for $5,000 just a few years ago. And I said, you know what? What I found is that by opening the door to more people who are new to big trends, what I found is that actually we have expanded the footprint of big, tre big trends where they've told their friends, we've had more and more people come to us, and they end up buying more stuff over time because you, you end up seeing the power of the methodology. We do have alert services. We do have the trading room, et cetera, et cetera. So bottom line is this is a way that I'm now saying, look, it's an entry-level um, price point, but it's actually – like a comprehensive level series of courses. So you're really getting phenomenal value. Okay, let me go back and actually um, see if I missed some questions here. Um, and so I'm glad you, this first time being in, David, certainly you'll see all kinds of focus here. David says, yeah, just pick four to six stocks to focus on. You don't have to look at hundreds of stocks like I was showing you earlier. I do that because it helps me boil down to the best of the best. Remember, that's how I was able to pick up this morning Amazon, because, you know, Amazon was popping on my scans, and it was showing me that, look, it just gave this fresh buy signal this morning on the 15-minute chart. So, you know, when I'm running that 15-minute scan, and I'm saying, look, what do I buy here if I'm looking for something fresh? Because it pops up those signals. You see, it was just popping that up uh, about three bars into the session here, and we were starting the class and saying, look, we just had a buy a few bars ago. Yeah, it's run some, but I was saying, look, that's still an active signal. We still got the strong directional movement trend down here. we got the great-looking percent R. Look at how percent R was staying up, 97%, 93%, 96%. If you've been afraid of buying overbought stocks, you've been missing opportunity here as long as you know how to trade in the big trends way. So that's what you're going to learn with uh, – because what you'll notice, by the way, I didn't show you, is that it's not just your trading plan and the options. What we've also woven into each of these classes is – special technical analysis training classes. So you'll learn percent R in the ultimate option strategies class. You'll learn acceleration bands. You'll learn the ADX and DMI in there. And then um, and that's actually in the that's in the foundations class, I, I take it back. In the options class, you'll actually learn some of the other supporting technical analysis tools like the key moving averages I use, the Donchian channels uh, for defining support and resistance. And then the commodity channel index has become one of my favorite filters to back up what I'm seeing in the percent R. Okay, so to develop a trading plan, Achilles asks, it's the foundations class, okay? And remember, you can click on either one of these text links. This is by far the best value. Like I said, the psychology link is for the new classes starting. That's going to be $4.95. You can actually get each of these individual pieces on the digital access for just $1.95 tonight. You'll get set up for instant access, and you can really start taking advantage of these best of the best type of opportunities. Um, let's see, other questions that I might have missed here, going through real quick. Um, and so, let's see. Um, I appreciate the kind words, Ron. I'm glad you've been uh, happy with our information and our integrity. Thank you, sir. It's very, very kind. Sydney says, our acceleration man's a proprietary indicator. It needs to be purchased for TradeStation. We do have, yeah, you can't get it on TradeStation unless you pick it up through our Big Trends Toolkit. For TradeStation, you can contact us, Sydney, at our 800 Big Trends line. You can see that number up at the top right of this page here. Uh, um, it's 1-800-244-8736. Uh, Just remember 1-800 Big Trends and give us a call. Mention that you saw us in uh, in Steve's event here, and you can get a little special uh, savings on the toolkit. Okay. Um, other questions. Um, Richard says the 195 class includes trading mastery. Yeah, foundations for trading mastery there, Richard. You're going to get all the mastery sessions there. So you literally learn all the pieces of, like I said, these tabs are reversed. So this is the foundation outline, going from defining your goals clearly and concisely, building your plan around those goals, building your system to fit your particular goals and plan, and then going into ultimately filling the gaps in your plan, ultimately how you can trade for a living, and track your positions. Also doing key things like analyzing your past winners and your past losers, and then assessing where you're at and how you go to the next level of success towards mastery. Um, okay, other questions. A lot of great questions in here. Um, you know, so he says try a free site and then the pay site. So the reality is you're going to get what you pay for. You know, if you pay nothing, 
I'm not saying you won't get anything out of it, but I think you're going to find, just like you probably found with some of Steve's membership site and other great stuff, the deeper you go, the more you get. And that's and you just have to decide, what's a good trade worth to you? Is it worth 295 bucks to get on another Amazon? You could have paid for this entire um, 26 uh, sessions of classes off of either of the trades I did this morning on the QQQs, which is up 300 bucks, and then the Amazon, which is up 330 bucks uh, today, okay, in, in a day. In, in really just a few hours. Um, other questions. Um, can you join for the alert, Shakar? You can contact Chris through 800 Big Trends Line. He can help you out on how the alert services work. That's Just mention you saw us in the Bigelow session. We can get you the best pricing, uh, whether you want to start on a month-to-month -month or, or quarter-to-quarter basis. Um, and you've got to follow the right um, approach. Yeah, some of you, like Shakar said, you know, follow the wrong guru, lost money. You know, that's important. You've got to make sure you follow an approach that makes sense. That's why what I did tonight is I, I said, look, let me give you, I mean, we've been booking profits on names I never would have thought I would have traded in a million years. Uh, this past week, I was, I was getting into Walgreens. Look at this stock. Walgreens, you think Walgreens, come on, a pharmacy stock? Are you serious? Look at what Walgreens did here this past week. You know, we picked it up on our hourly chart as it broke out right here on May 29th, last Thursday. We bought weekly options that were going to expire this Friday. And we're buying, uh, you know, the 70 strike call, and the stock's about $71. You say, why would you trade a pharmacy stock? Well, guess what? Because it was showing the pattern of success, and it goes from 71, even on that move, to 72.46. We made a 30 and then a 50% gain in a couple of days. You know, bottom line is that, yeah, you can see it's off to the races again. This is unbelievable. Walgreens breaking out. Well, you see, when you get the daily working in, con in conjunction with the hourly, in conjunction with the 15-minute, all three of those, I call it triple confirmed. You get all three, bang, bang, and bang, that's at like three rover rivers flowing into one. That's going to make for one powerful directional trend. So you'll learn about triple time frames through the course as well. Um, these prices aren't going to be good very long. Bottom line is that, you know, and Bill says that Walgreens has been cranking for a year, but it's about picking the big trend time frame. You know, I don't want to find that when it's going through a slow chop phase. That's going to be something that will frustrate you as an option trader. You've got to get your timing right. Tools like Percent R and the big trends approach to Percent R will really help you. Like I said, I've set it out there for not, not too long. Make sure to capture it overnight, uh, get started, and we can go ahead and set you up to get the access uh, so you can go in and watch them at your pace. Whether you're the type that likes to blow through something once uh, and, and be like pulling, you know, just an all-nighter to suck up all the information and then you can watch it again and again as you get comfortable, that's fine. If you want to take it a little slower, most people want to take it a little slower and kind of gradually relative to your schedule. And that's fine. Each of these goes about an hour or just a hair over it. So from that perspective, you can kind of soak it in an hour at a time. That's how I recommend soaking it in. And then Larry says, is there someone to call if you have questions? Yes, call Chris. He's on our 800 Big Trends line, and he can help you with any questions you have about getting you started and set up. And, uh, you know, he, he does a great job for me just walking our folks through and getting you started. And then we have our client care team as well. Anytime you have a question about your access, if you forget your password, those kind of things, you can get client care at bigtrends.com here at this email up top too. So, um, making sure I've answered uh, the final questions. Looks like that got to him. Does it help with the, the scans? Yeah, it helps with very specific signals there. So you're going to get really crystal clear. And Chris is popping his email in there, or you can call him at that 800 uh, number and his extension. And then the bottom line is I'm going to paste one more time this link in case you forgot it. It was bigtrends.com slash position for profits. If you can't read it, it might be a little small on your on your on the shared screen here. I've gone too long. I, I, wanna, I don't want to keep uh, Steve and Becky and all the good, Jim, all the good folks here at Candlestick Trading Forum. I appreciate you being with us. If you have questions, give us a call either tonight or tomorrow morning so we can get you set up, get you pointed in the right direction. It's also, you know, it, it does dovetail nicely with what Steve teaches and a lot of the trend following the T-line, the different patterns that he shares. I know the, the frying pan and a lot of other cool things that I've heard him talk about. Um, the J-hook, all that interesting stuff. I was listening to the other night, Steve, and as always, and always soaking in information from you too. I'm a big believer that you always look to learn other little tricks that you can add into your trading arsenal. You're going to learn a lot of eye-opening things, including some things that, frankly, are going to challenge your past 
perceptions because you may have thought overbought was bad. Guess what? Overbought can be very, very powerfully good. So I'm glad you've been with us. Uh, we do have uh, indicators available, Sam, on Thinkorswim and a lot of other platforms. Call us at 800 Big Trends if you have questions, or just go to that link, bigtrends.com slash position for profits. Thanks for being with us. I'm going to hand it back to Steve so he can wrap it up and say great trading ahead, and I know uh, you'll be finding big trends on any time frame you trade with this uh, special uh, coaching package. Take care, everybody. Have a good night and trade them well. Christ, thank you very much once again. Everybody, Thanks, uh, I go on one simple premise that if something works, it stays around. That's why I'm a strong advocate of candlestick signals. Same scenario with Price. He's been around for years. His system and his techniques work. So this is information that is well worthwhile to, to uh, put in your arsenal. And what you'll find is working with Price's people, they are great people to work with. They are in the they're in the business to teach people how to trade successfully. So with that, everybody have a good evening. We'll see you all in the chat rooms.